the grudge that they feel. I, I, to me, it's sort of just like I another match. Shit on them. So like, I got Seth adding a bunch of pressure on me. I need to shit on them. I need to shit on them. So after Vegas, uh, the Gears of War team, after every event, the Gears of War team takes kind of like a hiatus, a break. Usually it's, you know, in celebration of a victory, but after Vegas and a disappointing fourth place, it was more uh, just kind of a way to decompress, like let the players kind of separate, go their own ways, and, and not allow any arguments or anything to take place, any blame game, anything, any of the non-necessary crap that happens with teams. And uh, unfortunately, no matter what happens, there's still gonna be tensions that run high. There's still gonna be players who have strong opinions about things, and, uh, and those started to come out a few weeks into our, our break. Um, so it, it was a matter of, of figuring out what the best solution was for us moving forward. Uh, we're all strong proponents of, of keeping the same roster and, and moving forward together as a team, learning, growing. But you can only learn and you can only grow so much until there's a point where you kind of plateau and, and those plateaus are usually caused by reasons such as personalities not mixing well or holding the team back or, or just just not getting along and you know there were definitely moments where we were you know best friends and we were family and brothers but there was also moments where tensions were high and and things were said that probably shouldn't have been said and uh, unfortunately, I can't go into too much more detail than that other than, you know, it resulted in us making a change. Uh, we released Kenny and then um, things looked like going forward, we'd be in the right place. Players seemed to have the right mindsets and we kind of had a game plan on what we wanted to do to fill Kenny's shoes. When I got the call that we were getting rid of or we were parting ways with, uh, with Kenny Bounce, sorry with Kenny underscore bounce uh, don't forget the underscore uh, I, I really it, it 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 bothered me a little bit you know I, I felt as though I didn't spend enough time with them to be able to uh, offer the advice that I could have uh, or I don't think that I was I was I, I should have been I should have made myself more accessible to have these conversations with them because maybe there, there could have been something that could have been done um, it's really easy to get you know, lost within your own team. So you need at times an, an outside voice to come in uh, and, and try to find reason. And if there isn't something to find, if there's no reason to be found, then at that point, then you do the what, what the players want to do. Um, but I do, I do feel bad because I feel as though I didn't, I, I personally didn't give, you know, uh, Kenny my, my entire attention to try to figure out something. Unfortunately, uh, players, one in particular had a, a different thing in mind and Icy called me basically saying that he did not feel comfortable on the team and wanted to leave. And uh, obviously I did everything in my power to try to convince him to stay. Uh, we had a long hour and a half, two hour phone conversation multiple times in that day. Um, and he, he you know, admitted some things that were either his own fault or, or maybe not just not confident as he was when he first called me about this decision. But ultimately, it, it stayed the same as it was. And uh, we had to talk about it as a team. And obviously, we were all hurt. We felt like we were losing a brother, um, especially after the roster change that had just happened. And uh, it, it was a shock to all of us. So. It, uh, it put us in a tough situation where we had to figure out what the hell we were going to do. I mean, we, we released Kenny, we, we kept Icy, and then Icy wanted to step down, and uh, it, it just put us in a tough spot. But we knew the players that we wanted to get. Um, we had a few options for when we were just looking at replacing Kenny, and um, luckily we, we managed to, to arrange an agreement with Echo Fox, and we have made a trade where we are giving them Icy. In return, we are getting Brian Solers Valenzuela as our new fourth for the Optic Gears of War roster. So a lot of people ask, um, what's your roster? <laughs> That's the question I get seen, or I get tweeted most. I see it, 
I could upload a YouTube video of Fortnite and I'm going to get What's Gears roster in the comments. Um, so I appreciate the support and the excitement that you guys have for finding out who our, our fifth is going to be now that I've told you who our fourth is. Um, and I hope that all of you welcome Brian uh, back to the team. For those of you who don't know, he played for us a long time ago in denial. Uh, we won tournaments and championships with him and now he's back. So uh, please give him a warm welcome. In terms of our fifth, we are still weighing options. We're still trying to figure out what we want to do. Um, it's not anything that's probably going to get resolved in the next few days of you guys watching this, but hopefully down the line, uh, within a week or two, we can figure out a strategy going forward. Uh, we do have New Orleans. Uh, it's actually going to be a really exciting event. It's going to be a combination of Halo and Gears of War at one event, kind of like the old MLG days. So we're all really excited for that kind of experience. And um, you know, that's going to be July 13th, I believe, maybe 15th. And uh, yeah, we're excited for that. So we have a long month ahead of us, month and a half, I guess, um, to get prepared for that tournament. And with two new players on our roster, one of them being official, the other one still being decided. But uh, we hope that you guys will support us and stay patient because as soon as we have a fifth, we'll let you guys know. I, I think that I think that we're 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 lining ourselves up to be in some very exciting times and at times not having one team win it all is good for the esport uh, and up until this point optic has been such a dominating factor within the esports community that you know maybe maybe a refresh a reset on that as well may do the scene as a whole uh, you know some good and and if if anything else it'll refresh our team uh, to you know, hopefully get back to, to where we once were. So it's been a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks uh, since the Call of Duty shuffle happened. Uh, as, as of right now and where things stand is, as of right now, Karma, who is no longer on the team, has been uh, streaming a bunch. Uh, he's, he's, he seems to me as a happier, happier person because, you know, as good as he was at, at Call of Duty, you, th this dude is is good at every single game, and his his inability to play all the games in the world because of practice. And then I don't want to speak, for, you know, for him. Uh, this is, you know, he, he has his own voice. But as an outsider's perspective, knowing him for as long as I did, I always did see him happier uh, playing other games. True, his his passion is winning. His passion is being able to. Um, you know, to, to be known as the best, so, you know, only Call of Duty player with three rings, etc., etc. But uh, from from knowing him as, as as well as I know him, from speaking to people, his teammates, you know, uh, I think Formal said that he had never seen Karma as happy uh, as as he did while he was rooming with him in Columbus, and he would see him playing like Rust or some some other thing. So, you know, I noticed that too. So uh, so far, so good. I haven't heard any. Any complaints uh, of him? I'm, I'm actually working on a, on a quick little project uh, with him. Um, that's that's gonna be fun. So you know, for the most part, I think that, that he's in a, in a much happier place. You know, moving on to formal, I I just saw a picture of him in a in a luminosity jersey, and and it it, it made it, it made me do a double take because I it hurts a little bit. Uh, but you know, such is life, and and and, and people people grow, people move on, and. And so must we. And uh, and and as as I said before, as honored as I as I am to have him played under under Optic for as long as he did, um, I am now looking forward to to a you know to to feeling what what going against formal is. You know, it's uh it's it's something that I'm curious about. Obviously, when we first when he first came on the scene and, and we played against him, I think in Ghost, it wasn't you know it wasn't formal in his final form no pun intended but you know now that he is who he is now that he's accomplished what he's accomplished it's going to be it's going to be fun and at the same time you know i'm i'm nervous to see what it's like because you know he is formal he he can rise to any occasion to do what he does best so i'm i'm, I'm looking forward to the battles that we have coming up with him um you know luminosity is is, is very very lucky to have him and you know, again, I, I wish him nothing but good luck unless he's playing against us. The team's been going really well since it formed. Um, honestly, above my expectations, um, a lot of people were a little bit apprehensive of the fact that Zinni was joining as a second AR player when a lot of the maps in this game are a three sub meta. 
but he's starting to fill in that that role really really well he's comfortable on some of the maps with a sub some of the maps ah fuck he's sitting right next to me <laughs> <laughs> some of the maps wow but he's getting he's getting better at it um i definitely say he's a lot better with the sub than whenever we first started and it is a learning curve like playing online to land especially like playing with a sub is just different because the cameras are a lot different it's just a it really is just a different game mechanically whenever you come to land so we've only had two matches under our belt we've only scrimmed two days on land as a team we're doing really well though, uh, thus far though 2-0 in the league against not the best competition in the pool but uh 2-0 nonetheless is a good start so happy with the team practice has been fun dude like we just we laugh all day we make stupid noises like we're just yo are you there <laughs> are you playing ace we're literally idiots, but at the same time, like we know when to get serious and when to really get things going. We've been watching a lot of other teams and pretty much just preparing as much as possible. Obviously, right now we're at the league and we're using this as land practice. And obviously, if we lose one, two, or even three regular season land uh, league matches, it's not the end of the world. You know, we want to win Anaheim, stage two playoffs, and the big one champ so so seth has been staying at my house and seth and seth and ian came and stayed at my house at hotel casa de hex uh for a couple of days um seth ended up staying a little bit longer because crim six uh you know one of the one of the issues that they brought up when this whole shuffle happened was the fact that you know seth was playing uh, in in a in a as weird as this sounds right because you know he's seth as weird as it sounds he, he was playing in, in a setup that didn't quite have the right audio equipment. I don't know how a YouTuber that's been creating YouTube videos for the past seven years doesn't have communication, you know, cemented into his rig, uh, but he didn't. Another thing is that in the, in, the, in the apartment that he was living at, internet was super, super horrible, horrendous. It was just unplayable. Uh, so, you know, you add those two things and you get a situation like we had, you know, people don't want to play, you know, with him and he doesn't want to play because he gets blamed for, for losses within scrims and, you know, the, the, so on and so forth. So Krim said, he's going to your house and he needs to play out of, out of your, out of your internet. So, uh, being the hospitable host that I am, I not only set up a, a gaming setup in his room, um, but I, I made sure that the room that he was staying in was 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 uh, you know comfortable enough for him to live in. And the atmosphere that was that was at my house, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that that you know this was a, it was a proper training center for him. Um, and for the most part, it was. You know, he had really good internet. They had really 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 good practice. I talked to Crim Six. Um, and, and he has, uh, you know, he was down here looking at houses because he's in the process of moving down here. Um, and he found a house. So, you know, Casa de Crim 6 here in Texas is about to be live, if you may. Um, but I talked to Crim 6 and, and training and everything is, is going stupendous. Uh, they, I don't think they've lost a single scrim. I, I'm... I'm 99.999% sure that they have not lost a single scrim. Granted, this is online. Granted, we all know that if it's not on land, it doesn't count, but it sets the tone. And it helps when when other people in the in, in the community, uh, the Claysters, the you know the European boys, they they say that that Optic is the team to beat at this moment. Uh, and you have analysts putting us as as uh, as the number one team coming out of our pool. Um, it feels good. Uh, and you know maybe that's what we needed. Maybe we needed a, a, a quick refresh, a quick set, a quick reset, if you may, uh, to to get back on track to being where we belong. And that's at the top of Call of Duty Esports. Playing LG is obviously going to be a grudge match for a lot of players on each side of the stage. So, I mean, expectations for us, we switch two players out, they switch one player out. So realistically, they should have more team chemistry than us right now. But I don't want to. Say, I mean, obviously, I think we're going to beat them, but it's going to be a tough match. Uh, LG was struggling online a lot, and a lot of the pro community was like, they should be a lot better than this. They were like getting beat in map map counts that were just ridiculous. So they've come to land, and they they've been showing up here. I mean, they took Rise. What was it? Was it last map? No, they three one three one in favor of Rise today. But the match the maps were all really close. So honestly, I think the series could go either way. Um, Obviously, we want to win that, but we're just going to keep trying to work on the mistakes, win or lose. I mean, we want to win it really bad, but at the end of the day, it's just a league match, and uh, we're going to use it as practice over everything. My teammates want to win that one uh, really badly. I, I really can't relate to the grudge that they feel. I, to me, it's sort of just like 
I another want match. Shit on them. So like, I got Seth adding a bunch of pressure on me. I need to shit on them. I need to shit on them. It's just like, wait, I'm not adding any pressure. But you better fuck. He's adding pressure, <laughs> but I mean, I understand it. It's sort of like how I feel like when we play Rise eventually. Like you just, it's not the end of the world if you lose. Like I said, a league match, but you want to do everything in your power to win, and I'm looking forward to it. We went to Kiev and Starladder. We played some minor with some pretty weak teams, uh, but regardless, it was a nice it was a nice win for us. We we hadn't won anything all year, so it was nice to you know put put a trophy in the case. Um, besides just you know qualifying to tournaments, and you win some prize money, and you get some. You, we got our first DPC points of the year, um, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Expectations leading into the event weren't super high. Uh, we weren't really, really sure how we matched up against other teams, especially since uh, like VGJS, uh, the other NA team had just been cruising through every tournament and stuff like this. Um, so we weren't really, really sure leading up to the event. We needed to, unfortunately, the way the math worked, we needed to win a major here, here in Birmingham. It wasn't like, you know, if you don't win the event, it's a giant failure. It was never like that. Uh, I think, I think the entire team has kind of come to terms with uh, playing TI qualifiers since the start of the season, because it was pretty rocky for us at the start, and then now we've been in an upswing, but it just hasn't really been enough. So I think we all kind of had the mentality that TI, quali TI qualifiers are probably a possibility. So it wasn't ever like if we don't get first place, we could. I don't know, you can probably pick some brew and you can just play some Night Stalker with a bunch of Magos as a safe lane and then you off lane with whatever hero you have. You just play some brew plus your hero against the Lycan. I think it goes both ways, very much so. Because I think what you do is you put this Night Stalker as a 3 when they pick a Lycan and you just get a fast Crimson. You're very strong against him in the lane. <laughs> I hate that sort of all this shit. <laughs> Let's play, man! Nice shot, Chris. Nice shot. Alright. Oops, that was a nice Green wall, baby? Yeah. Green wall. Top six chips. <laughs> we got pretty lucky with groups. I mean, I don't like complaining about formats too much, but I, uh, in this sense, I think the format kind of played in our favor a bit. We had. We didn't really have that many tough opponents before we got, um, was it top four or top six? Oh. <laughs> it's probably going to be super hot on stage. Just saying. Get it? Yeah, yeah, I'll be up there. <laughs> <laughs> the supernova himself. <laughs> supernova? Yeah, that's when the sun shines the brightest. Cool. Is it? Is it Supernova is not one of them. It's not one of them. I'm pretty sure a supernova is like right before it starts out. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. That's what I meant. You're saying he's about to go out? <laughs> it's like in the hottest moment of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's every <laughs> science You're definitely not. Here to drink beer, here to support. Yeah. You can watch like an hour, but. <laughs> the fanatic, I don't think I was too nervous. I don't think I don't really get nervous. It's more of a feeling of um, like uncertainness, maybe. Like, uh, are we going to be able to do this? Are we good enough? Uh, how's our drafts going to be? Um, like, are we going to be able to, are we on top today? Are we going to be able to make the good moves today and stuff like this? Maybe that's nervousness, but I don't think, for me at least, I don't think I get the, the stage nervousness. 
uh, like, oh, I'm playing in front of all these people. There's all these lights and, and noise and, you know, flashes and stuff like this. Uh, I don't really get that. Virtus Pro are looking vicious and already comfortable in that grand final. They're looking for an opponent. They're looking to show, feel some resistance. They've graced through the competition so far, and these next two candidates are looking to do just that. Do we have any Optic Gaming fans in the house? Okay. And how about Fnatic? Aha! There you are. Raise the roof, Optic Gaming! Timing here with the stun, yes he has, and already Zai going Zai, on the back, the back line. making sure the flying DJ can't get there in time to offer Arbet the help. The shards blocking Arbet out, he's trying to get himself around, but there's the punch into the homing missile, that's Arbet gone. Pycat just rolling forward with the BKB, ripping through two of them, turning towards Envy, taking him down as well. They haven't got any buybacks, Optic, they're onto the high ground, they're taking two. So-so, uh, we weren't really sure where we were uh, in terms of, you know, what level of teams and what tiers and stuff like this. But, I mean, now we've, we've reached the Grand Finals. Uh, we're playing VP for a chance for TI qualification, which is a tough task. Um, it's a hard challenge, but I think we're, we're getting better and better with every game we play, with every series we play, we're improving and we're learning. So, I think we can do it. We have a chance at least, and I think uh, we're gonna hold on to that chance because TI qualification is very important to us, so we'll, we'll do our best. I knew that we had Virtus Pro kind of just waiting on the other side of the bracket for us, and I knew it was not gonna be easy. I knew that we were very, 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 very much underdogs, unfortunately. But, you know, we just got to go through the process, right? You just, you wake up every day and you just do your best and you hope that your best is enough. Yeah, so after this event, I think we're uh, there's still the super major, which is going to happen. So we're going to take some time off. Probably, you know, it's pretty hard to find practice opponents when these major tournaments are going on, especially against like quality teams, because pretty much everybody's at that tournament or is wanting to watch that tournament because you can learn so much. So we'll just be observing this tournament, and then we'll be starting uh, starting practice. I imagine we'll be doing some sort of boot camp um, down in Frisco. We'll fly out all the guys and we'll, you know, we'll make it official, all right? We're playing it, we're looking to play in a 20 to 30 million dollar event, so we gotta go 100%. Okay. 